Can you become a therapist if you struggle with anxiety, depression, or another mental illness? I'm gonna give you the honest answer in this video. Hi, I'm clinical psychologist, Dr. Ali Matu. I have over a decade of experience being a practicing therapist. And when I was an assistant professor at Columbia University, I worked with undergrads who wanted to go into mental health fields, uh, social work trainees, psychology trainees, psychiatrist trainees. So I'm really familiar with this question. And it's a question that comes up a lot in this psyche community right over here. But first I wanna push back on this question a bit because it's not a question we ask other people who want to go into other healthcare fields. Like, we don't wonder, can I become a primary care physician if I've had colds? No, that would be so silly. You don't ever ask someone, can I become an endocrinologist if I also have diabetes? Or can I become an orthopedic surgeon if I've also had a broken arm in my past? Those questions would be so silly. So why do we ask those questions of mental health. This speaks to some biases we have about therapists as well as mental health. So let's break those down. Let's start with the therapist bias. This belief that there's something natural, innate inside of you that makes you a good therapist. And that's just not the case. Everything that makes someone a good therapist um, from knowing what kind of treatment someone needs to overcome their problem to also knowing how to act so that you can help the person take advantage of that treatment, all of that can be learned. Yeah, some people might naturally be good at certain parts of being a therapist, but the type of treatment that you do is always gonna be based on the best of science as well as the best of clinical experience. And those are all skills that you can learn, you can develop, and you will get better at. And even some of those things that we think are much more emotional, like, developing a relationship with your clients and patients, being compassionate, being a good listener. There are skills involved in that as well. In fact, I made a video about how to listen like a therapist so that anyone can develop some of these skills. So a good therapist is going to get better at these skills. In fact, some of the listening skills came more easily to me, but there's other skills about how to push people when they need it, how to deal with resistance, how to deal with ambivalence when your patients are really unsure about what path to go down, how to deal with someone who has very low motivation. I didn't have any of those skills. Those things didn't come naturally to me at, at all. I had to work very hard at developing those sides of my therapist identity, and that's gonna be true for you as well. Some parts will come easy, some parts will be more difficult, but that's every profession. The other problem with this question is it's assuming mental health is this binary thing, that you are mentally ill or you are mentally healthy. And that's just not the case. We all are gonna struggle with stresses and losses and traumas and setbacks. And your mental health is gonna go up and down. So you might be dealing with a mental illness right now, maybe you won't in a year or two, and maybe that thing will come back when you have some kind of setback in your life. That's the norm. That's everyone I've ever worked with. And one thing that 2020 has taught all of us is we are all vulnerable to isolation and loneliness and depression and anxiety. Everyone has a mental health story now. And so if you're watching this video thinking, gosh, I wanna become a therapist, but I don't know, I struggle with these things. Everyone has struggled with something this year. It's a universal experience. And it's not a question of if am I, am I ever gonna struggle with my mental health. It's more of a question of when and how and then how do I recover and how do I bounce back? So I've unpacked some of the biases here and vented about them, but there's one more thing I wanna vent about, and that is your motivation for becoming a therapist. If you think going into either a psychology field or a mental health field is gonna give you the solutions you need to help you to manage your own mental health challenges, then stop. Don't do that, and instead, get professional help yourself. Studying this stuff is very different than working with someone who helps you apply all this stuff to overcome your own problems. Education and therapy are very different 
things. And while you will learn some things here and there from becoming a therapist that are going to help you with your own life, they aren't going to help you know what your blind spots are or how to tailor it to your own challenges. Only a professional can really help you to do those things. I mean, I studied this stuff for a number of years and then when, when I went to therapy in grad school, I had no idea what my blind spots were. I, I had no idea how much I avoid dealing with anger issues until my therapist started to notice that and we started to work on that. It was a complete blind spot for me. And that's what happens when you go into therapy and you work with someone who's an expert on this stuff. They're able to see things and identify things that you can never do yourself. So if you want mental health support, go get mental health support. But if you want to use this knowledge and experience to help other people, that's the right motivation for becoming a therapist. At this point, the answer to this video is obvious. Yes, of course you can become a therapist, even if you struggle with mental illness yourself. But then the question becomes, how do I become a good therapist, even if I do struggle with these things? And I have a lot to say about that. The first thing is you have to know yourself. You have to know how does your mental illness impact you, impact your work, impact your personal life? What are the signs that you might be struggling more? Because again, it's not a binary thing. It's not I have it or I don't. It's that you're struggling more or less. What are the signs that you might be struggling more? And how do you then get help? What are the things that help you? Also, what are the things that trigger you? What are good sources of support for you? When do you need professional help? When are you able to get by on yourself or with the support of friends and family? If you have that foundational understanding of yourself, you're in a very good position to make the most of graduate training in psychotherapy. But if you don't have that knowledge and you're concerned about this question, maybe it's time to get a bit more professional help to work on some of these things before you make the big decision to become a therapist yourself. Now, once you're in grad school or you have your degree, it becomes very important to understand three things. What are the types of problems I can treat without needing any type of supervision or support? This is the stuff that's your go-tos, I got this, don't need any help, it's not bringing up anything inside of me, I'm good. Then the next category is the stuff that you can treat, but you might need support from a colleague or a supervisor. This might be stuff that's more complicated for you, you have less exposure to, or it's bringing up some stuff inside you that's making it a challenge for you to be the therapist that your client or patient needs. And the third category is the stuff that it's not really a good place for you to treat right now, that it's too triggering or too difficult. After my brother died of suicide uh, and lost his uh, battle with bipolar depression, there were many years where I could not treat bipolar disorder and I could not, um, I had a very hard time dealing with suicidality. And so I need to do a lot of work with my supervisors in working through the challenges I had with talking about suicide because you it's not like you can not work with suicidal thoughts. They come up for a wide variety of people. So I had to really get a lot of good supervision on that. And for a long time, if I had someone who was coming with bipolar disorder, I had to refer that person to another therapist because I it was just too difficult for me to deal with. I've overcome that stuff and that's now changed. For me now, one of my big blind spots that's very hard for me, I need to sh uh, share these type of cases with other therapists or anything related to young kids being hurt. I have a young daughter right now and so for me, Imagery and thoughts and trauma related to young children being harmed in some way, it's, it's just too much for me. So someone came to me and has obsessive compulsive disorder and they have this, uh, they really struggle with violent images of kids being harmed, that might not be a good case for me. Or if someone has 
trauma when uh, related to being a young child and being really hurt in some way when they couldn't really defend themselves, that might be hard for me to do the kind of work they need. So those type of cases I will share to someone else who has expertise and can deal with that. So you got to know what can I treat without any support? What can I treat with support? And what's the stuff that I just it's, it's not good for me to work on right now. I don't expect you to know all that stuff before you go into grad school, but it is stuff you need to develop in grad school. And once you have your degree, really good conversations to have with your supervisors as you're trying to figure out what's my identity as a therapist. One of the cool things about having experience with mental illness and going into mental health is you get a really unique view into all this sort of stuff. I mean, I was a kid who had selective mutism that went on to become social anxiety. I've talked about that on this channel before. I've also talked about my phobia of bees and on Netflix Mind Explained, I talked about my fear of sharks. I've talked about my generalized anxiety and social or separation anxiety related to my daughter on this channel. So like, obviously I'm an anxious guy and have a lot of anxious experience and that's giving me a lot of understanding into what it's like to have anxiety. And I understand my patients in a different way because of that. And I understand these problems in a different way as a result of that. All that stuff is okay. It's going to get, it's gonna really enhance the work you do. Research is me search is one of the things we say in grad school and everyone got into this for some personal reason. So many of the greatest minds in mental health struggled with these things themselves. People like Anna Freud who experienced depression and disordered eating, Carl Jung who experienced psychosis, Albert Ellis who had social anxiety, Kay Redford Jameson who has bipolar disorder, Stephen Hayes, this individual who has had panic disorder and used that to develop a whole new treatment called acceptance and commitment therapy, Marsha Linehan who received such bad treatment for borderline personality disorder, it led her to develop a brand new treatment called dialectical behavior therapy, which is now one of the most effective ways of treating this problem. So if you're struggling with this question, know that you will be in very good company if you decide to enter the field of mental health. Now, one thing I wanna warn you about is your mental illness does not equal someone else's mental illness. Just because I have a lot of experience with anxiety doesn't mean I know how someone else might be experiencing anxiety. It can become very easy to make assumptions that the other person's experience is just like yours, and that's just not the case. There are infinite number of ways to experience all the problems we have in mental health. So you kind of have to work even harder on your empathy, communication, and listening skills when you are someone who has experienced a mental illness because it can become so easy to make assumptions about someone else and that's gonna get you in trouble. You are not your mental illness. It is just one part of your story, just one part of who you are. Understand it, monitor it, treat it, and then use it to help other people. For more videos about therapy and becoming a therapist, check out this video right over here. What questions do you have about becoming a therapist? Let me know in the comments below.